just ahead on American Black Journal, a volunteer grassroots organization keeps Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy alive. We'll get the details on their annual Peace Walk. Plus, Brilliant Detroit is helping families succeed through a unique neighborhood program. Don't go away. American Black Journal starts now. Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. For nearly 100 years, Ally has been a part of Detroit, and we give back by volunteering and donating in our community. We have a commitment to diversity and increasing economic mobility in our hometown. At Ally, we're dedicated to doing it right every single day. Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and one of Michigan's largest events is going to take place in the city of Southfield. Nearly 2,000 people are expected to take part in the annual Peace Walk and Ceremony. The event is organized by the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Task Force, a volunteer organization made up of residents, private and public organizations, and local government representatives. Joining me now is the founder of that task force, Barbara Talley, along with the treasurer and former president, Barbara Purifoy Selden. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, so uh, tell me how this walk got started. <laughs> well, it was 35 years ago when it got started. I was then uh, on the commission for Dr. Martin Luther King in Lansing and also city councilwoman at that time, the first African American to hold office in Southfield. And when on the national level, when we found out that there was going to be a national holiday after how many years, 15 years in Congress. A lot of argument about that. Yes, I very much so. Then we started to think about what should we do because elected officials and community organizations were asked to do something for the national holiday. And I asked about 32 people to come in, residents, to talk about what we would do. One of them said, I see a peace walk. Hmm. And so that's how it all got started. And so here we are yeah. now 34 years or 35 years and the idea of, of marching is a key part of Dr. King's legacy and a key part of his legacy right here in, uh, in Detroit. And what we try to do is try to emulate or try to exact exactly how they walked, for example, when they went across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. and their arms are crossed like this and they're holding hands, holding hands and right. we are so familiar with that, we shall overcome song. Mm -hmm. But the most, I think, important thing is that when Ronald Reagan signed that act that said, we will now celebrate this as a holiday, then it was important for us to be able to say, we can't let this just pass and do nothing. Yeah. We must make sure that it is a day on, not a day, <laughs> not off. A day off. And it's not a time where we're just going to have a good time, but we're going to commemorate, celebrate, and act as if Dr. Martin Luther King, because I ask myself all of the time, if Dr. Martin Luther King was alive today, mm -hmm. what would he say? What would and he I be think asking if, us to do? I think if he would look at our peace program, he would say, this was wonderful. Yeah, uh, talk about the peace element of this. Uh, of course, that's also very central to the, the the legacy of Dr. King. Certainly, we form at nine o'clock at Hope United Methodist Church, and there's a brief program, so that people who 
organize this know that it is following Dr. Martin Luther King's footsteps mm -hmm. as they walk. Now, the whole 2,000 don't walk, <laughs> but maybe about 800 walk, and then the doors open to the Southfield Pavilion for those people who don't want to walk. I see. And that makes up about over 2,000 people. And it is a grand, I, grand idea that all people come together. Mm -hmm. Our message is celebrating diversity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was gonna say what's amazing to me is when you see that walk, the weather is cold. <laughs> yeah. The it's weather can be cold. snowy. Yeah, right. The weather can be rainy. Yeah. But you'll see people pushing their children <laughs> and their buggies. You'll see people on uh, canes and with uh, walkers and wheelchairs mm -hmm. and you'll see the uh, Southfield EMS out there waiting for just in case they need to pick someone up. Yeah. But people are passionate. They don't want to forget. Mm -hmm. They want to always remember. And they're sure they want the legacy and the philosophy of Dr. King's to reign forever. Yeah. So it's important that this symbolize that, but not just on that day. We must carry through his legacy and his philosophy all year. And we do a lot of things during that time, not just that day Not alone. just that day, yeah. Uh, uh, it's interesting to me that this is in Southfield uh, uh, because uh, I think a lot of people would think it might be in, in Detroit, but Southfield is also a very important uh, nexus of, uh, well, the African-American community here in, in Southeast Michigan, uh, but, but also a place of, of real diversity. That's uh, true, that that's matters. true. But go back to 1985, mm -hmm. when I ran for city council, there were only 8%. There were percent that many, right. That were only 8%. Right. So putting it together back then, there must have been some reason for everybody to come together that, that wants to celebrate the legacy and of nonviolence, mm -hmm. nonviolence. And I was just going to say, Southfield is known as the center of it all. Yes, right. It is also it's the center business of the center of it all. Right? Okay, so it's really important for us to understand that in the city of Southfield, with all of its diversity, that we all come together because Martin Luther King wasn't there for African Americans alone, but right. actually for he everybody. had an impression throughout the world. Yes, yes. Uh, when, when you look around now and think about his, his legacy, uh, what are some of the things that, 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 that come to your mind? Well, I think about, I go back to what advances that we have made, uh, particularly in schools, in uh, discrim discrimination, mm -hmm. uh, housing, and I'm part of that discrimination came from uh, part of that discrimination in California. But to know that our young people can look at Southfield as that diversified place, mm -hmm. at, but learn also about their history. The Southern um, Poverty Organization has given Michigan a grade of F yeah. as far as civil rights of teaching that in the schools. So we must, must teach our young people. And uh, to furthermore, we are certainly in touch with uh, Atlanta, Georgia, the center, uh, the center there. The King Center. The King Center, yeah. and they're going to have a training session for us in April. Hmm. Yeah, I, On the Kingian fine. principles. Right. And the Kingian principles encompass nonviolence. Yeah. What we want to try to do is to bring our kids, our children, our youth together and teach them that you don't have to, uh, you can be a leader because you can serve. And we want to train them that you don't have to be violent and how important Dr. King's nonviolence principle was. Okay, And that we don't ever want to forget our history for we were enslaved. Mm -hmm. We came through uh, Jim Crow. We were a part of peonage. We made it through the civil rights era. Yeah. And we want them to see, look what our people sacrificed so that you can be where you are. And when I look at our nation today, if you're not careful, we're going to take some steps backwards. I think that's a fear that a lot of people have, is yes. that the things we see going that, on right now mm -hmm. represent a dialing back that's right. of many of the things that mm -hmm. we saw progress over the last So it's years. important for people to come out tomorrow 
it's important for people to say, I stand for this. And it's important for people not just to use that day as a symbol, but to carry on that from this day forward. Let us never forget. Yeah. Let us I, always I would remember. imagine that given the, given the climate, uh, the march probably has a little more urgency and this, energy than, this, it, uh, this year. than it certainly, always does. Certainly. And what's yeah. amazing to me is our youth. They, I think they see the picture. I'm watching them as they are. I look at the women who ran for offices and mm -hmm. how they won and how they're saying, okay, enough of the foolishness. Yeah. Let's get back to what right. America is all about. Okay. Well, congratulations okay. and uh, thanks very much for being here. Well, thank okay. you very much for having us. And Absolutely. everybody, come on out. People go out <laughs> okay. in uh, March. And in January with us. 21st, right. 9 o'clock at 9 the church and 11 o'clock for the huge program. And that info, the info will be on our program. website as well. It will be. Okay. okay. Uh, just ahead, an organization that's creating kid success in Detroit neighborhoods. But first, we want to continue our look back at this program over the last 50 years. Here's a 1999 American Black Journal interview about raising and educating black children. Is there value, uh, in your opinion, to African-centered academies or black private schools or black public school academies? Well, one of the reasons why I think parents get involved with that is because it is a real luxury to be able to send our children to a school where we know they will be reaffirmed, mm -hmm. where we know that the onslaughts to their self-esteem will not be based upon race, um, which is not to say that in an all-black setting they may not be picked on because of gender, because they look funny, because they're buck tooth, because of, you know, whatever. But that's at least one less layer that we would have to deal with in an all-black setting. The reality is, though, is that not a lot of parents have access to that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so when parents don't, what they need to do then is focus on making sure that our children are in settings where they will be reinforced and will um, feel positively about themselves as African-American children, where the teacher or the daycare provider understands what our culture is and understands when um, our children are expressing that culture. So I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. When my uh, four-year-old was in a preschool setting, she was in some play group, and uh, the teacher and all these other children were um, doing some sort of sport where they were saying, say it loud, say it loud. And then she said, I'm black and I'm proud. And then she covered up her mouth, and the teacher said, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Because she felt a little taken aback because she was the only black child in that setting. But her teacher understood. He listens to James Brown, he knows our music, and understands that I'm not creating some paramilitary organization in my household, but that my daughter listens to James Brown, and this is one expression of that. So he wasn't threatened by it and was able to support her in that. So when I talk to parents about what it is that you need to have um, for your children in educational settings, um, many of us would like our children to be in all black settings, but then if you don't have the luxury of having them, mm -hmm. what you need to do is make sure that those ch those um, people who take care of our children understand our needs, understand our culture, and are held accountable for making sure that our children are reaffirmed as African American children. The nonprofit Brilliant Detroit is on a mission to make sure that families have what they need to prepare their children for school and to create a healthy, stable environment. The organization offers a variety of programs and support services at Brilliant Detroit houses that are located within the city's neighborhoods. Here to tell us more is Brilliant Detroit co-founder and CEO Cindy Eggleton, uh, community partner Kenyatta Stevens from Black Family Development, and Jasmine Mahone, a participant in the program. Welcome to American Black Journal. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. So, uh, Cindy, you and I have talked before yes. about uh, Brilliant Detroit because it's very, uh, I figure you're sort of a close cousin to yeah. a project that I started in the neighborhood where I was born. I took the house where my family lived when I was born and uh, made it into a community center uh, in the middle of a neighborhood that's, that's really struggling. You have done this on a much larger scale <laughs> than well, I have. Well, so I, I think it is uh, similar, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your goal was within the neighborhood, and I love what you're doing. So I feel um, we might be brother and sister. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll graduate cousins, right? to that, yeah. Um, so, yes, we're doing it at a large scale. So we've been in existence for about three years now. Um, and the goal and the belief is that the power is in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. right? That when you really bring people together, systems have failed people, people won't fail each other, 
given the right conditions. Um, we didn't know when we first launched, <laughs> right? So we literally have houses in the middle of the neighborhood that we renovate to be resource centers for families and kids. Um, very clear kindergarten readiness, school, um, reading at grade level by third grade, but well-being. Mm -hmm. And so today we have seven locations. We serve 4,000 people and we have over 80 partners in the work. The work is fueled by the partners and our members. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and talk about this, this approach you have, which is not to come into these neighborhoods and say, well, I'm going to fix up this house and right. then the neighbors can can uh, engage with it. You start with the neighbors. We absolutely start with the neighbors. And uh, we don't go into a neighborhood unless we're invited mm -hmm. in. So we have about 10, 15 me meetings before we even say we will do this. That's everywhere from the neighborhood leadership to the blocks. Mm -hmm. It's really important. We believe that these locations are the neighborhood's locations and nothing makes me happier when I hear people talk that way. <laughs> it's owned, it's a with, for, and by approach. I'm a recovering data geek. <laughs> um, I think the thing, the essential thing is if you listen to people, they will tell you what they need and how they need it and when they need it. And that's really what we've done. Mm. Uh, Black Family Development's work, of course, is very focused on the things that uh, Brilliant Detroit is doing. Uh, and neighborhoods talk about the relationship between the two. Great, thank you. We think of Brilliant Detroit as a kindred organization. <laughs> um, I think our hearts are aligned in terms of this passion for partnerships, but also for community. Um, and so given um, what we think of as a literacy crisis in the city of uh, Detroit, we believe that this is a great opportunity for partnerships to really be more vigilant about working with parents and families to help resolve this mm -hmm. if we can. Mm -hmm. And so together we work on a um, program called Lena Start. And it is a national evidence-based practice model that really looks at um, working with parents using something as simple as a vest and a little device to help pick up on um, words and turn taking as it's called mm. um, and also with, really with small children with small children yeah. from ages from birth to age three and so what really makes this work are the parents the parents do the heavy lifting they are the community members particularly those in Osborne and Southwest who come in with the determination to give their children the best mm. Um, I think part of what we share with Brilliant Detroit and the other partners that we work with is that, as our CEO has always said, there is not a single parent, regardless of economic resources, who does not want the best for their children. <laughs> and so we believe that and our parents show us that. Mm -hmm. um, they take these little vests and they take these little devices and they allow um, their children and the words that are being talked about in their home to be um, picked up on this device. But what's amazing is as I am also a data geek, mm -hmm. is that we see parents tracking changes in their own home. They're using more words. They're using conversational turns. And they're seeing in their homes that as they talk to their children more, even in the youngest of ages, those children are uttering back to them. Sure. We're increasing language development on the spot and their weekly reports are showing that words are increasing, their children are understanding, and that's helping us move the needle when it comes to literacy and third grade reading levels. So Absolutely. We're happy about that. Yeah, that, that initial language development is yes. a huge key to, yes. to that early literacy. Everything. Yes. Uh, Jasmine, tell me about uh, your neighborhood and okay. tell me about Brilliant Detroit. I go to the Osborne site mm -hmm. and I am so honored to go to the Osborne site because it's not only a site that you can get educated on, it's, it's a site that we work with our hearts. They work with our hearts with the families. They love our kids, we love our kids and they bring our kids all the way up into uh, environment where we are able to see our kids grow mm -hmm. you know and I tell everybody like um, you know a lot of people do not have like parent support like you know and Osborne House in my own testimony in my own experience is actually a support system I am um, actually not only just there just for the kids, I go there for myself as well. Mm -hmm. I go to the GED program and I absolutely love it. I'm in the Lena Star program <laughs> and I absolutely love it. And I just love the experience. Mm -hmm. Like it's amazing how these Cindy 
and the other founders just come up with a program that's not just only a program that you can just get love with it. That's 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 important to a lot can, of us. Can you talk a little about what your neighborhood was like before Brilliant Detroit was? There? Um. Well, see, my neighborhood was like Brilliant Detroit. When Brilliant Detroit came into the Osborne neighborhood, they was really like, you know, everybody stayed at home, stayed in the house. Now we getting people from all seasons. We see all the kids in the wintertime, summertime, <laughs> fall time, all types of times. And we're able to communicate and see our kids grow. And that's what's important. Like, it's really important to yeah. see our kids grow. Yeah, no, it's really, that's really great. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Cindy, uh, you're doing this in seven neighborhoods. Yes. Uh, there are dozens of yes. neighborhoods across the city. Uh, there are dozens of neighborhoods that don't have resources anywhere near like what you're doing. Um, uh, give us an idea, though, of how scalable you think this might be. It's, it's a great question, and I think when we designed this approach, and who knew if it was going to work, <laughs> right? Um, the idea was that it would be scalable. Um, for each of our locations, we're very clear what the cost point is. It's about $150,000 a location to run for the year. Mm -hmm. It costs us about 250 to 275 a person for, pro, for, the, for a year. That is because we are partnered with the excellence in Detroit, like my friend over By here, family development and other who are bringing themselves in as well. So we're coordinating something on a continuous basis. So as Jasmine just said, it's not just one thing, it's multiple things, but yes. we want to build both adults and children. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of this is, in terms of scalability, you're right, there are dozens of neighborhoods. We have 10 neighborhoods on a waiting list right now. Wow. Um, but because- Who've raised their hands and said, hey, yes, we want this too. Yes, mm -hmm. um, because, uh, and, and somebody who works on our team said it, this is healing neighborhoods. So we came at this almost from an educational standpoint, well-being and, and education. But unless people feel love, safety, they don't grow. Mm. Unless you heal, you can't move forward. Mm -hmm. And and this is not brilliant per se. All of us are brilliant. And that is the idea, is that it is with, for, and by, and that's the power yeah. here. So yeah. it's, it's very scalable. We've also been asked to go into seven different markets. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're gonna stay in Detroit. We are gonna go into Chicago this year. Um, and see how that goes, but our heart is to fully build out Detroit. Yeah, uh, Jasmine, you were talking about that feeling of of love yes, and, absolutely. and nurturing, and how important that is to the experience. It is. It's very. It's very important because it's a lot of families that's that's in the community that need that guidance. And when you have programs that's able to educate you on that support. You, you're gonna automatically get those tools regardless. And it's just like, okay, you may come to Brilliant Detroit broken, but when you leave out that door, you're gonna feel like, okay, I'm, I, I can wake up tomorrow and come the next day, and the next day. And actually, when you keep coming, you're not only coming to just um, get the love, you're getting education. So you're getting like, it's like when you go to Taco Bell, go to 401, <laughs> you know, you're getting all, you know, you're getting That's it all. That's a great analogy. You know, you're getting it all in one. So yeah. it's like, do my, my point of view of two parents, do not be afraid to get out here and join programs and engage, with and engage in programs. Don't allow nobody to sit here and tell you what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. Don't allow no one to sit up here and say, oh, you're doing this program, this is free. No, you're doing this program because at the end of the day, you're helping your family and you're building your family. Yeah, and right. that's what it's all about right. within the program. Well, Cindy, congratulations again on the, yeah. on the program and thanks you to both of you for coming. Thank to you share for the experience. Us. Appreciate it. All right, that's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can go to AmericanBlackJournal.org to get more information on our guests and to check out a calendar of events. And uh, as always, you can connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time.
As American Black Journal looks ahead at the next 50 years, we want to hear from you, the viewers. Tell us what you think of this program and what you'd like to see on future episodes. Visit AmericanBlackJournal.org to take a quick survey and share your opinion. Thank you. Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. For nearly 100 years, Ally has been a part of Detroit, and we give back by volunteering and donating in our community. We have a commitment to diversity and increasing economic mobility in our hometown. At Ally, we're dedicated to doing it right every single day.